Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? You guys, we are back here live on the Brush by Brandy Facebook page and Instagram channel. Is that true Sorry. or did I just lie? No. Okay. <laughs> You're fine. Go I ahead. think we are. Sean had a look of panic on his face for a minute. No, it just I always like when it throws something new out. Go ahead. Okay, so Go we're fine. we are back here yeah, live. We're back. It's been a few weeks. What's it been? Three weeks, I think, since we were live. So um, you guys might have noticed, noticed if you follow my page, uh, we just took our whole family and we went to the UK. Um, we went to England, Scotland, and Ireland, and we were there for two and a half weeks. Um, and I originally went for a, an event. We did the Painters Business Academy over there. It was a spectacular event, you guys. It's always so good. This is my second year doing the Painters Business Academy. I love the event. It's it's um, it's an event like no other because it has multiple brands together in one. So a lot of times we see that like one brand, uh, redesign with Prima or YSL Paint, they will do an event uh, specific to their brand. But the Painters Business Academy combines a ton of different brands. We had, um, you know, Artistic Painting Studios was there. Annie Sloan was there. Redesign with Prima, Klingon brushes, uh, which you guys see me use all the time, uh, Stallmeister brushes, Would You Bend? I mean, there were so many amazing brands there, Poly Onlay, um, and all of them came together, which is a pretty cool experience. So we had a great, a great crowd. It was super positive, just a really fun event. Flew by, like went by super fast. Uh, my boys got to see me do an event, a big one, um, which was kind of cool. They were super helpful. Well, sorry to interrupt you, but this one's YouTube. They can see all your dirty laundry. Yeah. The scope is, oh, yeah, yes. everything. Sorry, guys. That literally is my workbench. This is a workspace, <laughs> and so I don't even try to make it, like, look pretty. I mean, I'll, well, I'll be honest. It's a little messy right now because I've been gone. And so, you know, you know when you just come back to work after you've been on vacation for a while and, like, your desk is a mess? That's where I am right now. So I did pack my brushes up and take them with me on the trip. And so, uh, I, I don't know, I came, I came home to this. And so I'm just now getting back into my regular flow. Of course, we had a couple of days of coming home and just being tired, just kind of jet lagged, getting back on a regular schedule. Then we realized we had no groceries. So we had to go <laughs> grocery shopping. Kids are back in sports. Of course, we come back to a week where my son has like five water polo tournaments in one week. So we're trying to do that at the same time. Uh, thankfully, he was able to get a ride tonight so I could be uh, live. But um, anyway, so uh, a lot of chatting, but we're going to work on this piece tonight. We actually started this one before I left. Uh, we put a base coat on it. Um, this combination, if you guys go back and watch that last video, is going to take me three coats. So, so right now I've got two on the front. It actually looks really good, except I do have a few areas in here that are that I can still see a little bit of streakiness that I want to get rid of. I don't think you can see it on camera, but I'm definitely noticing it. There's one color in this combination, and it's the center color here, which is called Raspberry Beret. It's a three coat color. Um, and so let me get my colors out. We'll go ahead and get started working on this. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about coverage in different paint colors. Um, and uh, the three colors that I'm using tonight are YSL paint in black, which is black, it's black. Um, I'm using that just for the outer edges to do some of my shading. So very little of the black going on. I'm using black cherry, which is a deep dark purple. I'll show it to you on here. So that's my black cherry. And then I'm using a color called Raspberry Beret. And a lot of you guys came on. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Marilyn says, just now realized I could watch you on YouTube and now you're on the big screen. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's my worst. Oh, that, that thing right here? Yeah, that's yeah. my worst <laughs> fear is that I always have like something in my, can you guys, I don't know, can you see the pores on my face? Like I'm, I'm like, ah, that's my worst fear. Do I have something in my teeth? Um, okay, so these, this is my color combination here along with black, pure black, just for a little bit of shading. So I'll put that. So you can kind of see when I use a, a three color combination, I, use, I choose kind of a gradation of colors. I've got a lighter version here, which is the Raspberry Beret. Um, I've got a darker purple, but these both have some purpley tones in them. And then my black just for a little bit of shading. But nothing is super far apart. I'm not going, you know, I'm not cho choosing like a blush pink. You know, that would be a really, that would be a tougher blend. Whereas if I choose two colors that are close together, it, it works really well together. So Raspberry Beret is the one that's giving me um, this 
issue in the middle where I definitely need three coats. The, the black cherry, I'm good on two coats and the black, I'm good on two coats. But every once in a while, you do run into these colors. I also wanted to talk to you guys because some of you guys messaged me last week. Uh, Raspberry Beret is a little hard to find. It's actually a discontinued color. And I apologize. I try not to do that to you guys, but I had it in my stash and I really like it. Um, so I want to give you an alternative um, in the Wise Owl line, and that is Rock Steady. Okay, it's a little more pink, but because this is a blended look, and you're not seeing the true color so much anyways, and I think this would blend into the Black Cherry. So Rock Steady would be the replacement color that I would give if you're not able to get um, um, the Raspberry Beret. Some retailers do have it on their shelves. You might be able to find some out there. But Rock Steady would be a good alternative. You could mix a little bit of the purple into it to get a darker tone even. I think that would work just fine to get a similar look. Oh, hey, Donna's got a big statement to Hey, make. Donna. Hi, Sean. Oh. Yeah, hi, hi Donna. <laughs> not, me, not me, just Sean, yeah. Donna. Don't worry about it. I missed you guys. It's been a long time. I hope everyone's good. Um, it feels weird to be back a little bit. Okay, so my brushes, I, um, I painted earlier. Like I said, I did a second coat on here. We're going to do our third coat. And I just took my brushes and I wrapped them like this. I used a little bit of saran wrap and this went into the refrigerator for about two hours because I knew that I was going to come back. A brush holds a lot of paint, so I try to not uh, rinse them out unless I have to because then I'm washing that paint down the drain and I've got to refill the brushes to come back and use it later. I only will store brushes like that usually for about 24 hours. If it's going to be more than that, then I'll just rinse them out because I don't like my brushes to get crusty. And it does take a toll on your nice brushes to leave them with um, paint in them. Okay, so let's get some paint on this. But first thing I want to do is, is this is actually really smooth, but I want to just take out any little chalkiness to this finish. I am going to lightly sand this. Sure, I'll move over here. Yeah, sorry, you're going to get the back of my head. And this is a, um, this is a really wide piece. And so that's actually kind of why I wanted to do the front with you guys because I'm going to show you how to do a larger surface like this. So you're going to see when I start putting paint on here, I've got to move pretty quickly. Um, I do also recommend wearing a mask when you're sanding like this. Anytime you're sanding chalky paint, wear a mask, you guys. I'm on camera, I'm talking to you guys, but I've tried to get uh, a much better about wearing my safety equipment uh, when I'm working, especially things like sanding. You don't want any of that going into your lungs, aspirating any of it. Although white, white out, white out paint uh, is one of the uh, cleaner paints, but I still would never recommend breathing anything like that. Okay, so I just went ahead and lightly sanded that. Really should have brought a rag out here. Can you grab me a rag really quick? Nope, can't do that. I, I kind of knew that I was gonna probably be a little unprepared because my brains no, no, I have a t-shirt, please. The one but, I have but let, me let me show them that. Yeah, let me show them that. So the, he was going to hand me a um, microfiber cloth, and I don't like to use these for dusting. So, that, so I, that's what I said no to was a microfiber cloth. I actually prefer to just use a t-shirt rag. And my, by t-shirt rag, I mean actual t-shirt. I have uh, three guys in my house. We go through some t-shirts. And then I'll just dampen it. That just gives it a little bit of tack, and I'm gonna take all that dust off. Um, tack claws. Some people use tack claws. I am tacking off this uh, surface, but I'm not using a tack cloth. And the reason is I got a couple little white spots here in my paint, and I know what they're from. They're from the brush that I used earlier. I'll talk to you guys a little bit about that brush. Um, tack cloths can be made with silicone in them. And silicone is a resist, meaning that uh, if you put it on your surface and any of that silicone gets left behind on your surface, it will uh, create a resist in your paint, which is areas that your paint will not adhere properly. So I avoid tack cloths. They do make silicone free tack cloths, but honestly, I find that the rag works just fine. Took my dust off. Um, all right, let's go ahead and lay our paint on. I'm gonna to have to work really quickly. And this is one of the caveats of working on large surfaces like this. Same thing when you're doing uh, tops, like a long dresser. If you've got a 60 inch dresser and you wanna blend the top of it, it's a challenge. I do a lot of wood stain tops. This one's gonna have a wood stain top. I've got a little paint on the edge. I still have to do my final sanding, so that's not a big deal. But I do a lot of wood stain tops. I don't like blending tops. 
I, and I also really like the look of a wood stain top. So I do a lot of wood stain tops. This one's gonna be a wood stain on it. And then I showed you last week what transfer I was gonna put on here, but it's gonna change because That's I, got so a, weird. I got a new transfer hmm. and it's perfect. It's like the prettiest color. I'm gonna stand this again. I think you should. No, I am. Um, Watch out. The razor blade. Here. Here under your stools. No, that won't work. All right. Well, let me show you guys this. If I have something stuck in my paint, this is not my final coat. But if I have something undesirable stuck in my paint, which I do right now, oops, I can't slide this out. There we go. Okay. This is how I will fix it. I take a razor blade, and I'm going to razor it out of the surface of my paint. I've got a couple of little white dots in here. Oh, well, Sherry wants to know how the kilts fit. Well, they didn't. <laughs> Nobody came home with a kilt. Uh, Logan did get a hat, a Scottish hat. Um, we They saw the kilts in person. They do look kind of, they do look really feminine, kind of, I think, for American standards. They're beautiful, and we saw, like, people out on the street playing them. Um, and I'm never going to wear yeah, and, and they were expensive. So I did get a cashmere scarf. That was a little, like, that's something I can justify. I'll actually wear it. It's beautiful. Okay, so I took the razor blade and I just lightly scraped that out of the surface. And now you can see I've got little marks here where those were, but I don't have any roughness. Let me explain to you what it is. This, I used this brush and we're going to use this tonight. This is a block brush. Um, this one is by Cristana. You guys know Cristana, Bella Renovare. This is her Trust the Process brush. Um, you can get these from I Love Hue Paint. I will throw a link up for these um, tonight. We're gonna use this brush and it says in the instructions, but it does have little bits of a, a baking soda that they use in the brush um, manufacturing process. And I still had a little bit of it in my brush. I did wash it, but so when you use this brush, it comes with instructions to wash it thoroughly. And I would really wash this thoroughly. Like before you use the brush, pull at it, brush it out with a brush comb to get any loose bristles out and you wash it thoroughly. And I think I'm gonna be much better now, but I had a couple little bits. I got like three little bits of still that baking soda that got into my paint. So that's what I was fixing. No big deal. Cause I know it's not my last coat. All right. I said to you guys, I'm gonna to have to work pretty quickly. So I'm gonna start here with my lighter color, which is this raspberry beret. And I'm kind of gonna frame out sort of an oval shape in the center. I'm gonna start brushing and I'm gonna brush pretty quickly because with this long, large surface, I've got to move fast and keep my paint wet. So um, if, you, if you guys notice me getting into the zone and not talking so much, that's why. Is that when I can throw out dad jokes? Yeah, so, okay. so Sean can throw out dad jokes. I'll try to just go through as I'm brushing, but I'm gonna be doing this pretty quickly. This always kind of makes my heart go a little fast until I get these, these large areas. I don't need a whole lot of paint because this is just, uh, my coverage is decent. This is just kind of my last coat to get rid of any of those little imperfections in the coverage of this hot pink. Uh, it's called Raspberry Beret. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it just to kind of elongate my paint, especially as I get to these outer edges where I'm gonna be blending it into another color because I just need like a thin layer. So I noticed that how I blend kind of evolves over time as I learn different tips and tricks. And that's kind of one thing that I started doing is I'll thin this layer out around the edges as I'm going to blend it just to give myself a nice, thin coat to go out into that next color. And that's something that I didn't always do. You can probably watch some of my older videos, but the process changes with time, I think, with anything that we do. You must have watched my blending video. Oh yeah, I did. That's probably what did it. Yeah, the, the what not to do video. Yeah, what? Okay, so this doesn't have to be perfect because I just need to get this paint onto the surface pretty quickly. That time I just added the water beforehand just to make it glide over the top. It's gonna look really bad while I'm working on it. That's the other thing I noticed about this is I was kind of like freaking out like, oh, this is not turning out. And then once I just stepped away, let my paint dry, it actually looked really good. I'm gonna continue to keep this paint wet while I'm going. 
I also noticed that this process takes me longer when I'm talking than when I just do it. I hope I dripped a little bit of my paint down here. I don't want that color down there, so I'm gonna move it. Got a little brush hair, get that out. Okay, keep it wet. Just a little mist of water to keep that paint moving until I'm ready to work with it. So I got that on my surface and my next color is gonna be this black cherry. So I changed to a separate brush. It's also one of my Klingon S50 brushes. And this is gonna go around the outer edges. I'm gonna mostly, I'm not gonna really pay attention to these side skirts here. I really am gonna pay attention to the center of these right now. Okay, so again, a little bit of water. And then where it meets up with that raspberry beret, I'm gonna brush it right into that. Now I'm not trying to perfectly blend, but I don't want this stripe right here either because the paint's gonna start setting up like that. And I'm telling it, nope, don't get comfortable, like we're not done here yet. And I'm gonna do it um, vertically and horizontally. Okay, already that looks, that looks like a really nice soft blend of those two colors. It's a great color combination. Like I said, I think the uh, Rocksteady would be a great substitute for that Raspberry Beret. Okay, and this is going to go all the way around. All right, that side looks pretty good. I'm going to come and do the center. Same thing, brush it right into that second color so that it doesn't start setting up with a firm line right there because obviously I want to move these colors together. Not quite doing that just yet, but it's coming. Do up here on the top. I'm going to get under this little skirt, the little lip. If I get a little paint onto my wood, that's okay. Of course, I try not to, but I do still have to do my final sanding of this top. All right, so I got my center and then I'm going to come move over to this side and do the same thing here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and mist this just to keep that raspberry beret from setting up because now it's been a few minutes since I put that on. Not a ton of water because I do want to come back and work with these colors in a minute and I don't want a big soupy mess. Right now I just need the colors on the surface and then I can come back and start working them together. This is a little bit easier. This is a two color blend because um, my black is only going to make an appearance on these sides and so I'll do that in a separate step. So right now I'm just focusing on these two colors. All right, and I brush them together, a nice wide overlap. My brush starts getting kind of muddy. This is my brush for my black cherry and you can see it's picked up a, a fair amount of that raspberry beret. That's okay, I totally contaminate my paint colors. Oh, look at that. Hey, Emily. Hey, Sheila. Oh, hey, Emily. Oh, hey, Sheila. Um, so let's talk about contaminating your paint colors. I paint out of my can. It's a bad habit, um, but I do it. So when you're doing, when you're working with larger cans like a quart, every time I dip my brush back in there, I'm introducing contamination back into that can. YSL paint is a, a little bit more of a pure paint, so you can start to see like um, corrosion around the lid. Um, if, if you don't want to experience this and you don't, it's not good. Um, dump your paint into a separate dish and paint out of a separate dish. Keep the rim of your can clean. Don't introduce that contamination into your can every time you paint. And if you need to store a can like this, it will store so much longer and so much better if you are painting out of a separate dish. Say as I do. I usually I order I, these smaller containers I because I know I've got this bad habit. I go through these smaller containers pretty quickly. So I'm not storing containers for a long period of time with um, contamination in them. But I just, I, I totally, I, I totally need to break the habit. All right, I'm gonna freshen up this paint a little bit with a little bit of water and working that water into it. And now we're going to blend these colors together. Got a little, Little something right there. Sheila says, I've got cans of paint I haven't painted out of yet. Oh yeah, well those are safe. If they're if they're unopened, then you're good. But mine are never unopened. They're always open. All right, let's talk about the block brush. So I, I want to show you guys this while I talk about it really quick. I'm going to dampen my paint a little bit. 
keep it nice and fresh. Okay, um, the block brush, I'm gonna use this for blending. And um, this is a nice wide brush. It's got very soft bristles on it. This is another example of a block brush. This one's by Klingon. And this one, you can take the handle off and then you can see it would function kind of similarly to that. So that's the Klingon B12. This is Kristana's brush. We're gonna go ahead and just use Kristana's brush tonight, but I wanted to show you what, what they might look like. You know, a block brush. It's a big fat block, kind of narrow, nice and thick and chunky. I'm right here. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I'm gonna take this brush, it's clean and it's dry. I did use it earlier, but I washed it out and then I blow dried it with my blow dryer. Be careful you don't uh, melt the bristles because they are synthetic bristles. And I'm gonna brush right through these colors. And I'm gonna pull this paint and I'm gonna do it vertically and horizontally. These are great for blending. A block brush is a great tool for blending. I usually use a smaller brush, but especially on larger surfaces like this, this is a great way to work those colors together. My paint's a little dry over here, so I just add a little bit of water to that. Um, one thing I do when I'm using a block brush like this is notice how I'm keeping it like this with my colors lined up. So I've got the dark and the light, and it starts picking up those on my brush, and I keep it in the same the same direction, so I'm always working the right color section into itself. Okay, um, when I first used this brush and I, I didn't wash it quite as well as I should have, I got some loose bristles in it, so make sure you wash this really good. I'm not getting that this time. Now down here where my color order is reversed from up here, I'm gonna flip my brush over to make sure that I'm keeping my colors in the right area. That's magic. Look at that. My paint is starting to dry right here, so I just added a little bit of water and then I'm brushing it in. I'm not keeping my brush strokes going one direction. I'm moving my brush in random kind of brush strokes. And my paint is pretty sticky. It's kind of, it's started to dry. It's not that wet anymore. I'm going, oh, I got, see one of those brush hairs. Pull that guy out. Okay. Probably one of mine. You wish. <laughs> I have no more to sacrifice. All right, and I'm going to make sure that my blend is nice and smooth going from my top drawer to my bottom drawer. All right, and just pull those guys out. A little more water, and I'm going to work that water in. And same thing, I'm kind of Flipping my brush. Oh, come on, Sheila. What? She showed her coworker my awesome 1776 t-shirt <laughs> because he's Brit. Yeah. But oh, he yeah. didn't find it funny. Oh, he didn't? It's so funny because um, <clears throat> Sean was wearing 1776 shirts over again. And, and, you know, the English are cheeky, right? They like to, they got a good laugh out of it. But it was funny because some of them didn't get it. They would be like, what does your t-shirt mean? Yeah, I would say if you yeah. were probably under the age of 35, you didn't you didn't grasp the concept. Yeah, some people asked him, what does your t-shirt mean? You know, they, they could tell we were American just anything. They apparently missed that in history class. Yeah, it was kind of funny to have people ask him, what does that mean? And somebody even said, oh, uh, you guys really are stuck on that 1776 thing. And <laughs> Sean's like, uh, yeah, it's kind of a kind of important to it's kind of ingrained in us over here but it, it was mostly as a as a joke and and he, and he it's it was a conversation starter and it was pretty funny it, they uh, they were totally good sports about it it um it it was a it was a laugh it was a laugh all right so that kind of made quick work i like using the block brush it's super user friendly and i can keep working this paint again i have um this is my third coat, so my paint is nice and dry underneath. So I'm able to keep working in this until I really like how it looks. And then it, I, I feel good about this. At this point, I would take, and now that my drawers are done, I can go in here and cut in like this section right here, which is just black cherry along this bottom lip. Does the block brush show brush marks? Um, it's so weird, it, it's, it's this, there's nice, <coughs> they're not <coughs> sorry i got a fuzz in my throat they're nice soft bristles so 
I'm not putting a whole bunch of pressure on the, it's kind of feathering through it. Yeah, can I have my water? Thank you. Um, it's very, very slight. And also the randomness of the brush strokes, they're not deep brush strokes. So using the randomness in it, you kind of start to lose the brush strokes in the randomness. It's almost like sweeping. So you're just lightly sweeping over the top. I get my brush or my, my um, pressure on the, bris, on the brush gets softer and softer. So if we're inside the house and I hand you a broom, you can't get offended? Um, well, have you seen those, have you seen those, um, those memes where the wife is like, I'll cook dinner as soon as I'm done mopping the floor. And she starts mopping the floor with like a tiny little paintbrush. <laughs> like basically I'll never be done. So good luck. So yeah, I could, oh, actually, I don't think I could sweep the floor with this. And then you can really see on my brush how keeping it so the um, light goes, fades into the dark, how I'm constantly overlapping those colors to where they belong. And it kind of just reaffirms my color layout. So that's kind of a fun, fun tool. I do like using them. Um, down here where I've got a skinnier space. Now um, I'm just gonna go back to my Klingon S50. And I'm gonna carry this black cherry down here onto this skirting just a little bit so that I have that nice thin layer that I can start working into the black. As far as the block brush goes, I would only use it on my final coat just to perfect the final coat. I found that when I used it on uh, my first coat with this, especially with this color combination uh, where my coverage was, was a real sticking point, it wanted to pull too much of my paint off. But here where I'm just perfecting the blend and I'm on my third coat of paint, I loved it. So really nice blending tool, but I used it on my final coat only because on the first coats, I wanted to leave that paint on the surface and not be pulling it off with the brush. Just saying hi to Paula, she was over. <laughs> she's been gone too. How was your trip, Paula? Well, she's bouncing back and forth, but you know, at least Facebook, when the comments pop up, they stay. Yeah, um, that's one thing with, with uh, YouTube is the comments don't stay up after we get off. So, all right, so so let me show you how I just did that. I carried this purple down. Well, and in the moment they die out, they, they fade out after like oh, two seconds. Oh, okay, if you get, you get too many of them. Yeah. And I just carried my purple down a little bit. My coverage on my black is already pretty good. And I'm just going to... Yes, hi, Cindy. Hey, Cindy, how are you doing? And I think I saw earlier Bruce says hi. Oh, hey, Bruce. Um, okay, and then once I've got the front of my drawers figured out... You know me a screwdriver? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get the lip of these drawers. And the drink or... Oh. So a couple tips I try to do when I'm doing a blended finish. You'll notice that usually my legs are a solid color. Um, I don't blend all the way down onto the foot of the piece. So like here, my leg is pretty solid black. And I try to do that as a favor to my customers because um, legs are usually the place that you're going to kick. Uh, they're going to get hit with the vacuum. When you move it, it's going to nick a wall. So legs are probably the most vulnerable area. And if you've got to touch it up, I try to make those a solid color. If they're blended, touching up a blended area is much harder. I usually try to make my legs a solid color. And then I try to make like outside edges a solid color too. So I'm not trying to blend on the frame of my piece. Here on my, on my drawers, I will put the same colors that are on my body. This is a pretty easy process. You might think, oh gosh, I just did all that work to blend the front. I definitely don't want to blend inside of it. Well, I, I do that, but it's pretty easy. Okay, so I'm going to lay on my raspberry beret. I laid on my um, black cherry. I'm going to let them overlap. And then I can come back with my same block brush and I'm going to pay attention to my color layout. I've got the raspberry beret here the black cherry on this side. And I just blend them together. Flip it for this side. And I'm kind of I'm kind of brushing like like this. Softens out those brush strokes. The 
just feather those colors together. And then if you look on the rest of my body of my piece, all around the other outside edges, it's all a solid color. So that was the only part of my frame that I have to blend. The rest of this is all solid color. This is solid black cherry up here. Sorry, I was laughing because Donna comes on and says uh, she's baking. I think it was uh, Cindy Soto says she's sewing while she's watching you. And then Yvonne comes on and says, I'm doing nothing. <laughs> Slacker. Yvonne, we're still proud of you. Donna, I don't know why you don't have a baking show already. Like, you need a YouTube channel just for your baking. All right, I got a little bit of paint right there. And then this is where I'll hit all my edges. And I would take the drawers out at this point and go ahead and go around the frame of this piece. So that went pretty quick. And I like this. This is where um, I will let this dry. And you're going to notice a little bit of, of unevenness as this is drying. So I can see right here, this is a little more wet. I just got to let it dry. All that's going to cure itself. The paint will start changing colors. You've got lighter areas where it's still wet, darker areas where it's still dark. So try to not judge your piece while your paint is still wet. Let's look at the side of this one. Let's not knock the paint over. Yeah, again, like I already did earlier. Yeah. Of yeah, course, it's it, like a crime scene. Of course, it was the discontinued color. I did spill the raspberry beret earlier, guys, and I had to oh, man. Uh, clean it up off the floor and strain it. Because my floor is not the cleanest. What? Pretty much, it's not clean at all. Is what I'm saying. It was clean one time. All right, install. This side only has one coat on it. You can really tell. It's, um... Oh, thanks for posting the score, miners. Oh, <laughs> I'm, wait I'm waiting. My, my, um, my son's just finishing up his water polo game, and... He had texted you. I don't pay attention to that guy. I want to know the score, though. I want to know how they did. I'm becoming a water polo fan, guys. We're, I'm, I'm really trying. We're learning a new sport. Um, you guys know that our experience with rowing ended up... Uh, we had a really bad coaching experience at uh, the youth nationals and uh, led to led to a whole bunch of stuff. A uh, whole bunch of stuff. A lot of bullying, abusive coaching, and my son wanted nothing to do with it. I was pretty proud of him for being able to walk away from something like that and just pick up a new sport, especially after going to nationals. So... We are doing a new sport. All right, so that was my light standing. Makes a huge difference. I do that on uh, in between every coat up until my final coat. So let's put a second coat on here. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm glad you feel good about that. I mean, I'm not painting it, so I totally feel okay this with it. This is the first uh, the first live in a while that we haven't had to hurry to get off because because we had to go. Gotta go pick up someone. Yeah, we had to go pick up someone who's kind of nice. These little gremlins. Get, yeah, there are people to drive our kids around. All right, so uh, same thing. I'm going to thin out this outer edge because that's where I'm going to start working the paint together. So I just want a thin layer in the center here. I want my paint a little bit thicker. I don't know. I mean, I probably could do this in two coats. Maybe especially if I was going over dark wood instead of that gray primer. Yep. I might be able to. I'm going to try Got the bad experience. We had to move on to something, yeah, something better. I learned a lot about abuse in youth, in youth sports. It's really sad, you guys. And then, um, I'm, not, I'm not the type, like, it's really hard because I have a very strong sense of right and wrong. As an adult, like I know when things are wrong and even my son knew that things going on were wrong. He came and told me, uh, he got in trouble for talking to me. That right there is a huge red flag in youth sports. If uh, kids are being punished for having communication with their parents, it was classic isolation, manipulation, classic. And I didn't know what was going on until we had to travel with them for six days straight. And then it all came out. So I learned a lot. I learned that it's a lot more common than it should be. I learned how many adults are willing to turn their head and walk away, especially when it means their kids' college futures are on the line. My son had to give up his, you know, hopes 
really, really, really sad. And I stood up and I said something and it has made me a pariah <laughs> because so many people just want to brush it under the rug because it's not pretty to talk about. It does, you know, jeopardize reputations. No way. Did it really? Fa wow. Facebook, uh, <laughs> she made a comment that she threatened. Uh, she uh, offered to go beat someone up and then Facebook removed the comment. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, threats of violence. We, oh, they haven't seen anything yeah, yet. Yeah, well, I, I have, that was on my, I have only talked about it on my personal page. I will be talking about it publicly. I have to wait for a little bit more information to come out in the wash. Uh, I'm still very much going through the process. Um, but it's, it's atrocious. Like, I'm appalled how adults are willing to turn a blind eye and how they think that right and wrong should not, not exist as soon as you get into youth sports. Like it's okay to just, I don't know, ignore the things that you know. Like I as an adult know these things are wrong. My son knew that it was wrong enough to come talk to me. And then, and then punishment starts, so. All right, I need a third coat, guys. I thought maybe I could do what? it. I need a third coat. Come on. No, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and see if I get it on a little. Goodness. <laughs> I know. I want to be. I want to be done. I got decoration to put on this piece. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna add a little bit more paint and see if I can. I mean, as much as I like hanging out with you and all. I think the block brush really thins the paint out. If I blend it a little bit softer, just using a different brush. I think if I skip the block brush process. It does take a little bit of, of the, it takes a little more of the paint off the surface, I think. So I'm gonna try it. Let's play around. So I'm basically just reapplying my paint so that I can uh, leave more on the surface when I do my blending and see if I can get this in two coats on this side. Huh. Cheyenne from Texas uh, wants to know, uh, what about the new transfer? Oh yeah, you do want to know about that, huh? I wish I could show you, but then I would have to be killed. And I, um, I'm i not in favor of that. <clears throat> which uh, part? Other people might be. <laughs> Hold on, can we go back yeah, a step? Yeah, it's, which part? It's like the mafia. It's like the tra transfer mafia. You know, I could show you, but then I, well, I'd have to kill you then too. Uh, well, huh? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Hitmen are expensive. I just don't have the resources. They don't work on coupons. <laughs> yeah, they need to start or I can't afford it. That's, that's not the that's hitman why, you want. That's why we're still married. Uh, All right, this is my brush for my um, raspberry beret. <laughs> There's still hope for Sean. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just doing this very softly I'm, so that I don't take as much of the paint off the surface. I'm trying to manipulate this and get my coverage in two coats. <laughs> don't get dead, first rule. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> Gotta make it to step two. All I can say is it's really pretty and it goes with these colors. Wow. Yeah, so I don't know how helpful that is. Huh, Tina says that she found the Raspberry Beret was a little thinner than the other. It, it is. So uh, every paint line has those certain colors and it has to do with the, the base that they're mixed in in order to get the color saturation out of it. Uh, reds, it's really common. Yellows, it can be common. Obviously a raspberry beret would, I would consider it to be a shade of like a red, probably uses the same base. Um, it's a, it's totally, I'm used to coverage in two coats and it's definitely a three coat color. You know, I'm still stuck on that. But first I love, thing. I love the, uh, the saturation of the color. I've got a little mark right here. That's just a little bit raised. I'm just going to go over that once this coat dries, so that the paint's a little thinner on that one mark. I think I can do it in two coats. I just had to be a little softer with my hand and let that paint stay on the surface. Um, so when I order colors, when I'm testing a paint, I try to order a dark color. I try to order a white. Whites are always different. They're made in a different base. So I like to, when I'm testing a paint brand, I like to see the coverage of their whites. Um, I like to see the coverage of their darks and you've got to be careful. I would never want to try a paint line if I'm testing it out to see if I like it. I wouldn't do that with a red or a yellow 
because every time it's not going to be fair. It's not going to be comparing apples to apples because those are colors that always, always take an extra coat or two. White, yellow, red. So if you're trying a, if you're trying a paint line and you just want to see how it performs, I would test a white. Or we'll test a dark color. It doesn't have to be black. It could be a dark blue. Um, you know, to get an idea for their coverage overall, you kind of have to um, you have to test a variety. There was one paint line, um, and I I ordered a color. It was a like a soft beige or something. And 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 I messaged the brand, and I was like, oh, the the coverage on this, like I'm just having a really hard time with the coverage. And they said, well, yep, you picked one of those colors in our line. So there should be like a disclaimer on there, huh? That says like, this is a three coat color. But I mean, there's always exceptions to the rule. Like I said, if you were putting this over a dark wood instead of I was putting it over that light gray primer, uh, that would definitely help. So I'm doing this section in my black and my purple now. So I brushed on my black, got it into all these nooks and crannies. But I don't want this to be solid black. I want to work that purple in so it gets this nice, pretty, hazy purple. The only thing I don't like about working with black is it makes it harder for me to accent in black wax. And I really love black wax. Oh, look at that. Another defector that came over from YouTube. Really? Is YouTube that bad? The view is definitely better. Well, it's the comments. The comments will drop quick. Oh, yeah, that's fresh. You've been running live. And it's before, <laughs> it's before we can read them half the time, too. So Susan says, welcome back. She said uh, she was wondering if I got locked on the laundry room again. Um, no, there was no laundry room. Our venue didn't have laundry, and that was that was that stunt because we really needed to do laundry. So I had to wait till we got to Solly's house. Solly from Would You Venue, we went and visited her, and uh, I we did laundry together. That's how I choose to spend my time with my friends, is doing my doing my laundry at their house. So it was fun. We hung out on our patio, had dinner, um, and and we washed our clothes in, in our backyard. We hung them out to dry in our backyard because <laughs> we didn't wash them. And then we washed our clothes in our like backyard. A, not like a wash Yeah, with a washboard. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. Um, we hung them out to dry because we had more than one load and we only had one night to do it all in. So we were using the dryer already. So we hung out some other ones to dry hoping it would be we only had one day at our house so all right you guys i super love this combination it's really pretty so i'm going to let this dry but this is my paint finish so from here i will apply my transfer that you guys can't see but i have to have something ready because when it comes out I think, I think it's next week i think that's ridiculous i think it's next week i don't know i just got back don't ask me dates on anything i don't even know what day of the week it is um, I will say it's, uh, I know I, I, I'm just not turning anything over there. I got a box <laughs> yeah, sitting right there. Box. Yeah. Um, it's like I'm in on it. I know. Well, I hope you're, I hope you're not. All right. I'm going to brighten up this purple a little bit and I think I'm going to dry brush once this dries and I'm just going to hit the edges of this probably with a little bit of the. Uh, purple and then a little bit. Let's see. Let's do it over on this side. Because this side's dry. Move my paint over here. What are you doing? This side. Can you see if I come over here? I hear my way. So, what I would do all if, set up. if I was dry brushing a side like this, uh, I'm going to take my brush from my black cherry. I'm coming, YouTube. I'm doing this just because this side is dry. But I need to do, I need to repaint it. So, but I just want to show you the dry brushing process. Oh my God. So, I didn't add any paint to my brush. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, names of um, things that you refuse to show sounds like. Rhymes with. Yeah. No. No? <laughs> no, they'll, they'll, then they'll stop sending it to me because they know that I have a big mouth. Like, then, then it's the deal's over, it's all over. So I'm going to brush in the black cherry when I get to this dry brushing process on both sides. And I'm going to pull this in. I'm pulling from the outer edges, very little paint on my brush. You can see how the bristles are kind of separated because they're not saturated. I didn't fill that brush up at all. I'm just using whatever's left in the bristles. And I'm just going to hit these high points, pulling it in from the outer edges. OK. 
Okay, and I'm gonna come a little bit further in with the black cherry because then when I come back with that raspberry beret, I'm just gonna get the very outer edges. I won't pull it in quite so far with that one. And then I'll get this kind of layered effect where it looks like it's fading from the outer edges to the purple to the black as you move in on the shapes of these. Does that make sense? And then I'll add a little bit of gilding wax here too. So I don't have the advantage of being able to use black wax on this color, but the dry brushing is how I will accentuate. Oh, hey, Donna says just tell her. <laughs> well, Donna, that would be unfair. Then I'm showing favorites. Look, yeah, there's there's not very many. There's like two people left. It's fine if you said something. I, I really think it's next week. If I'm not mistaken, I think I'm supposed to have this stuff done next week. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Woo! <laughs> so don't tell them that part. I'm the one who's staying up the night before doing all the homework. But I didn't get it done in time. No, obviously they know I was traveling. Um, I'm going to pull in that, that raspberry beret a little bit more because I really like how it sits on top of that black. It's fire. My kids are saying that what all the you... time. Oh Every, everything's gosh. fire. I refuse. Mom, those shorts are fire. These glasses are fire. Everything's fire right now. That's really pretty. I refuse. Just lightly hit that, and then I'll probably add a little bit of like silver gilding wax just for the softness of it. I'll do the same thing down here. Each generation just gets lazy with the language. <laughs> That's fire. That's what the kids are saying. I'm that guy, yeah. That's really pretty. But like I told you, this all has to be repainted because I got some of my paint here. So that's what my plan is. But what I really have to do oh, is paint this. <laughs> Tammy, that dresser is fire. <laughs> <laughs> that is fire image. that is proper. That's proper use of the word. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That that's. I'm gonna start commenting on everybody's posts. This dresser is fire, and everyone will be like, "Brandy's so young and hip." <laughs> <laughs> sure. After chili, there's fire. <laughs> Okay, that's not the proper use. That's not how the kids are using it. Yeah, yeah. Use <laughs> yeah. it in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> you you fail that test. Oh my gosh. That's a whole nother thing. We came home and we literally spent an entire day just working on the homework packets that we had. We got as much done as we could. That's so weird. I don't remember them saying any other homework was fire. Yeah, but they did not. Homework is not fire. Okay, so you have to have sent, what, so the antonym, is that what that is? Seems the opposite. Homework is not fire. All right, so that was my black cherry. Let's blend these together. This is my brush for my black. And then once this dries and my paint is actually good, then I will do the dry brushing. Oh, look at that. Ruth says, uh, as much as I love new uh, new release, it's hard on my budget having so many too close together. I know. She just spent $800 on the last two. Well, that means it, that means it's good, right? That means it was it's fire. That means it was fire. <laughs> that means Jeez. that release was fire. <laughs> uh, I usually have a few favorites in each release. I'm just hitting this little edge of this drawer right here. Sometimes the edges of your piece can get, uh, you can pull more of the paint. I swear, when you move, YouTube makes it seem like I'm a creeper, like I'm looking in through the window. It's so far <laughs> away. The thing lens on it. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the heck? That's what you should do. Start filming from outside the window. Oh, well, then I got to watch what Facebook is catching. There we go. And it looks weird. What? Okay. We're good? Yeah. Okay. Now we're good. I, I'm yeah. more worried about it showing the release than anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I forgot that box was right there. I did not. <sighs> Thank you. Uh, so I usually have a few favorites from every Sorry, release that I will pick. I don't know. Maybe I should do something like that. Like, sh well, I mean, I hate to like pick and choose, but what? um, but showing you guys what my what my favorites are, especially when it's bigger releases. Like the last one had a lot of stuff in it, so there's usually a few things that catch my eye right off the bat. So the, it's just kind of fun to know. But that's how we get them. Is I I obviously can't get everything in the whole release doesn't get sent to me. Uh, we usually get to see what the, there's only a certain amount of samples that are sent out to the manufacturer uh, from the manufacturer before the release. So there's a limited quantity available. So I can only request a few things that are my favorites. Uh, right away when I see the photos, there's usually a couple things that stand out to me. 
But then I find that I always see other people use it. And I'm like, oh, that was good. I should have got that one. Oh, that was good. I should have got that one. That was fire. That was, oh, that's fire. So Tammy, you can only use it once, by the way. Fire, that's it. One time, done. Yeah, this one I have a couple definite favorites in that I really like from it. And this the transfer I'm going to put on here is one of them. This paint is drying really pretty. It's super nice and smooth and soft. So I'll put that transfer over the top. A little bit of gilding wax is on this. And it's done. I feel also like I'm trying to get back to a little bit of simplicity. Uh, there's beauty in a simple paint finish. There's beauty in not having to use 10,000 products on everything just... I don't know, I like to do a mixture of things, but I'm feeling a little more simple right now too. So I think my paint finish is fire. I love it. I think it's done. And the next step is that transfer. So you guys will see that when the release comes out. Uh, you guys, I do have a YouTube video coming out of something that I finished up before I left on my trip. It's really pretty. Um, can't wait to share that with you guys. So I do have a YouTube video coming out on my channel tomorrow. So check that out. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I put a new video out there every week, unless I'm traveling and then maybe I don't. Um, so I do have a new tutorial coming out, a lot of fun new stuff coming up. Uh, and next week we will start on a brand new project together. And this will be one that you see coming out in the release and you'll get, you'll know you guys worked on it a little bit. I'll finish up the top on this and get some pictures out to you. So thank you for everyone who came back. I, I missed you guys a lot. I like just hearing the familiar names. Uh, I'm super grateful to you guys for coming back every week and keeping us company. This was You're fun. Welcome. Yeah, Sean, especially <laughs> thanks for coming back. <laughs> Did I tell him about, okay, sorry. I know I've talked a lot on this one. I've been gone. We have this joke in our house where like, especially because we needed groceries when we got back. I'm like, we have no milk. Dad has to go get milk. <laughs> and the kids are always, okay, we'll see you in 14 years. There's a there's a friends episode where uh, uh, it's Phoebe knocks on the door of her her family. She's looking for her dad, and they say, "Oh yeah, he he uh, he went out to get milk," and um and she's like, "Oh okay, how long ago uh, will he be back soon?" And they say, "Well, he's been gone about 14 years, so we're expecting you back any time now." <laughs> And so the, every time Sean's like, "I'm gonna go get some milk," and the kids are like, "See you in 14 years, Dad." Like the people who listen must think we have the most dysfunctional family ever. That's fire. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, all right. So Sean has to go get some milk. Because uh, <laughs> our milk really did taste like fire when we got yeah. back from our trip. Well, <laughs> it was not good. that's if it, it was, came out of the container. It was not fire. Yeah. It's so weird how solid it was. <laughs> it's like cottage cheese. All right, guys, so I will catch you guys back next week and we'll start a brand new piece together. We're going to use Mint by Michelle Paint and we're going to do some decoupage next week. Time to go get some milk. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, you guys.